There we go. Welcome. Half an hour. Any of you that do know me, and there's quite a few that do, know that I can talk quite fast anyway. And knowing I've got 30 minutes is not a good constraint for me. But anyway, uh, welcome. Uh, it's lovely to see all of you. Um, so, I, basically, this talk brings all of my passions together um, of visual storytelling. Uh, if you saw Marcus's uh, workshop or amazing things he did at the keynote, you'll know, you know the importance and significance of that. Um, and also my passion for product. Um, I don't go with a you know, hierarchy and role, um, so I like to call myself head of crayons. Um, but generally, anything to do with product um, and visual storytelling, I'm rather passionate. So in the next 30 minutes, I will be talking about the product disposition canvas. And if you're a little bit perplexed by that as a title, I will explain more about it. And you will see uh, some little canvases out here. Uh, so um, if I get the opportunity, you will be uh, working on that a little later on. So I've broken this down into sections, and the first bit is storytelling. Um, and I think with all the talks today, as you can see all the way through, it's all about the art of storytelling, and it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Um, this, uh, this talk is nestled with lots of little uh, agile nuggets. You may have seen, um, I create these little agile nuggets, little nuggets of insights. Um, and this one here is from Steve Denning. And he suggests that a story needs to be authentically true, but wake you up out of your complacency. So has anyone ever been a business analyst? Done a, you know, a bit of visio process mapping or statistical analysis? You're not always telling a happy story, uh, but sometimes you know, stories can be used to wake people up out of their complacency or you know, to present the art of the possible. So storytelling, I think you'll all agree, is, is critical uh, to engage, inspire, teach and infuse. And uh, the ancient art of storytelling will always exist. Um, as I've mentioned, uh, visual storytelling I'm really, really passionate about and it's brilliant to see so many people here interested in seeing Marcus's session earlier on. Um, quick, quick sort of synopsis of all these things, whether I've worked in social care with adults with learning disabilities, using visualisation as an enabler for participation and engagement, or you as coaches, facilitators, trainers, leaders, team players, you're always generating ideas and solving problems and trying to gain alignment. Um, and you're also trying to ensure that you can make the invisible visible and embrace divergent and convergent thinking. So they're just some of my top reasons and purposes for the visual element. Um, as you'll see, this is a way of framing how we can generate stories. So this sort of disposition canvas is about the stories that we can tell and that we can use uh, within our armory when we're trying to create successful products. Um, and visual storytelling being one of them, and storyboarding being really, really, really key. I don't know if anyone's ever tried customer journey mapping or storyboarding, uh, whether it be uh, an as-is or a to-be process or narrating an idea or thinking about a value stream, whatever you're trying to do, it's really, really powerful. Um, and at the end of the session that Marcus ran, he ran a session around that trigger action reward, a very simple way to create a story. Uh, and of course, another story generator being Rachel Davies' um, Connextra style story, of course, quite common in our space. Um, where I can, I'm going to nestle in some great talks from the, the speakers today, like Chris and Marcus and Geordie, because it's the synthesis between the talks, I think, are really key. So when it comes to storytelling and the storyteller, that's what I think of about that product person. Um, I'm a CST, so I'm kind of, uh, you know, in some respects conditioned to talk a lot about product ownership, and product ownership is something I'm really keen on. But don't think about these roles, or sorry, accountabilities, as um, too literally, you know? It, you don't want to be sort of a, a blocker or an impediment, and you want to ensure that you're kind of, you're there. Your key, the key thing for me around product ownership or management or being a product person is being at the center of your stakeholder universe and understanding that you're not a hero, but you're a human trying to mine for truth. Uh, and I think, okay, I'm going to shout out to Geordie about knowing your worth, your strengths, which will come out later, and who your coach is. So, some key things there. So, yeah, a little bit of an Oasis spin on it, another Agile nugget squeezed into the slides. Uh, you can check that one out. So, storytelling is, is key. And 
Controversially or not, you may think, um, you may be familiar with uh, Bob Galen's product ownership model, which just sort of emphasises, don't think of roles, but think of the qualities that you need in order to, to kind of create successful products, understand more about your customers, thinking about ethnographic research, you know, traditional to more product, ma uh, product management aspects, as well as you can, you can uh, all frown at me and run away, but project management. But all these elements that you need and the stories that you need to generate to infuse and inspire. Um, and um, Henrik Kneiberg, uh, this is another little nugget we created, but he's a he, brilliant little uh, visual that he, he sort of came up with this idea of talking about his time at Minecraft where they have like a bug fixer and a tracker and everything's incredibly visible so that you can actually get out there and people are suggesting where bugs need, you know, bugs or where code needs to be changed. They're, they're reducing the gap. So as a product person, you want to get out there and test your ideas. And a little shout out to Carl and Matt with the idea of that experimental mindset. Did anyone go to the talk? A couple of nods. Um, of course, it was talking about acknowledging that you don't have all the answers, so you need to get out there and learn fast. So, so far, I've hopefully emphasised the importance of storytelling and being the storyteller. Carl and Matt, I just, I literally just give you some kudos. Just want you to know, right? There you go. Um, so, when it comes to the little disposition canvas around the room there, this is really, for me, a story generator. And of course, with like anything, it's just a way of contextualising discussion and, and sort of orientating yourself around where you need to go. Um, the reason it's called disposition is because there's two definitions that I rather like. And the first being your temperament, your character, your grain. What makes you you? Uh, like we had from the keynote this morning, um, I really enjoyed some of those discussions around unleashing your own mindset and knowing your own worth, right? But what makes you you and what makes you unique? But as I'll go on to explain, what, is your, what are your weak spots, your blind spots? And actually, that's a bit of a negative connotation. Who compliments you? Because this really is a team sport. So there's one element there about who you are and why you, you can sort of help to create successful products and, and drive success. And then there's your, your orientation, you know, where you're located. Are you actually that strategic? It's all very well knowing about being a visionary and understanding the importance of a validated roadmap, but actually are you in the minutiae? Are you right down in the bottom and you're thinking about execution and in that execution mode, do you really get to see everything? So, where are you? What's the motivation for the product or the motivation for what you're doing within that product life cycle? So they're the kind of two elements to this um, orientation tool. Um, as for the fact I've called it a canvas, you know, you've got frameworks or a canvas, any of these types of things, going a bit sort of geeky with visualization again, um, I think you'd hopefully have got that, that visualization really embraces divergent thinking and diversity being really key. But frameworks enable a little bit of convergence, so kind of getting everyone on the same page. Um, you know, we've all, I'm sure you've all uh, enjoyed reading books like Game Storming, using graphic metaphors and things like that. Like the sailboat, anyone use the sailboat metaphor? Very simple, obvious one, but you know, getting everyone on one page when something is yet to be defined as a problem. So framing is, is useful, so that's kind of the reason, so I've explained the title, and now that's an explanation of why it's a kind of uh, a frame or a canvas. Um, okay, so there's an opportunity in a second just to think about your situation and think about your context um, as a product person. But now the question is, what stories are you trying to tell? Um, first of all, uh, I've got this sort of tested this out with different people and a lot of friends in the, in the community. Um, around the world and Bob Galen was looking at this with me and he said be careful it doesn't look too linear and I agree I want you to not think that there's only one way of doing this and of course uh, do think of the of, of product uh, product discovery and product delivery and that product strategy cycle much more in a cyclical bi-directional way this is not a way of saying you do one thing and then you do this and then you do this um, a shout out to Chris McDermott talking about those practices, the relationships between practices, the context and that learning. So if you saw that awesome talk this morning, there's a little bit of a correlation with that. Um, 
and you know, stories are being told all the time. It's not just in the name, but like Jeff Patton, of course, this is all to do with workflow, but that is a story generator. And again, the beautiful thing about these story generators is that they should enable stakeholder engagement. It's not what they are, it's how they're used. And what story are you trying to tell? Um, a little thing in the top right hand corner is sort of emphasizing when you might use these tools. I don't want to be too prescriptive, but something like story mapping is a good example of something you would use maybe considering workflow as well as that sort of, you know, the very much the depths and the breadths of everything that you need to do to tell that story. So whether you call them practices or frameworks or tools, all of the things that we do, the how, are for me, in the context of this talk and this canvas, sto uh, 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 story generators. And it may be that you're working more strategically, sort of thinking about the action plan, um, the things that take you to where you want to go. And again, I'm, this is just as a disclaimer, these are some things that I use. These aren't the only tools, of course, um, but you might be thinking about the vision, the framing, the strategy, that continuous validated product strategy that needs to go on. The roadmap, product goals, and maybe if you're more tactical, thinking about those individual steps, you might be thinking more so about more outcomes and metrics and, and other things that go on in that sort of section there. So again, there's, there are different tools for the job and different stories that need to be told continuously as we strive for relentless improvement. Um, not expecting you to sort of look and understand and summarise all these uh, different tools, but um, when it comes to discovery and validation, uh, it's key that we, you know, we constantly do this. I've got Gabrielle in the room here, so um, if you think about, um, you know, thinking about outcomes and, and, the, and that continuous desire to discover and validate, um, there are so many stories and generators that we can use to frame ideas, to have that experimental mindset that we were just uh, looking at just a second ago in the talk upstairs, as well as not getting confused between the difference between discovery and validation, um, and actually understanding how our customers are behaving and, and, and the success of our products. So lots of different tools and techniques being used there which is now an opportunity for me to take a little breath and allow you to speak to your neighbours, have a little conversation. We have got biros, but we also have Sharpies if you don't want to use a biro, but if you steal the Sharpie, we'll be very, very sad. <laughs> okay, so um, if you wouldn't mind looking at this, all I would like you to do is consider what story generators are you using? And, uh, you know, my, the, the jargon for story, all I'm saying is what tools, what are you using? Um, what is your perspective of the product? Where are you sat? Are you sat, do you know your customers? Is it an internal thing you're working on? Um, and try to plot your position. At the moment, I'm just interested in this vertical axis, not the horizontal. So just thinking about from strategy to tactics, have a chat, how long we got? We're fine. We're fine. Have two minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Two minutes. Be a terrible scrum master. Very, very small time box. I do apologise. Um, great discussion over here and a question around what do we mean by tools? Can it be Jira, for example? And, the, and it can be anything. I mean, what are those, what tools and techniques are you using that tell a story? What stories are you trying to generate? Would anyone like to share the tools or techniques you're using or what you're what your position is with your product, any of the above. Mm. Sir. <laughs> so as my f um, friend here also said, PowerPoint, you could start with a PowerPoint, Confluence, but a lot of idea generation, whiteboards, uh, and then eventually a distilling down through story maps, user journeys, Miro, Figma, and then into, God help you, Jira. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. You all hear that? Any diff anything else anyone wishes to add to that? Uh, for me, back in the day, um, working uh, local authority as a, as a BA before I progressed into different areas, um, 
it's how you can try to tell a compelling story. So if you are using statistical analysis or doing some sort of uh, value stream mapping where you're trying to understand the value ratio, by visualizing that, by, by using some of the tools that Marcus was saying, just makes things a little bit more compelling. Um, the question is, when we've been thinking about what um, was said earlier and we should all, all be embracing is simplicity, the art of maximizing the amount of work not done. So. What stories are we trying to tell? How much effort are we putting into things that aren't actually providing us with the opportunity to learn fast, to change, to change behaviours, to change and pivot? Okay, good stuff. So when it comes to your story or your flavour, uh, we're all different, we're all unique, which is wonderful. Diversity for me is a beautiful thing. Um, you don't really need uh, Agile uh, if you've got all the answers, right? You don't, you don't need it, really. You can just cooperate. For me, collaboration is, is key when you don't have all the answers. Again, uh, the, uh, a good sort of definition, a reminder from Matt and Carl just a second ago about that experimental mindset. And as Marty Kagan once said, you know, the art of not knowing, you know, that's the only thing we do know is that we don't know. So going back to that product, that product mindset, that sort of the, the way in which we should all think is it's very much uh, that we need to go and mine for truth and find out what questions need to be answered. So for me, it's, it's knowing your blind spots. And again, going back to what was mentioned earlier, you know, finding a coach, finding a guidance, understanding who your complement is, you know, and, and, and understanding that there's not enough said about product people, uh, you know, the ex expectation that you have of, of knowing everything, being a subject matter expert. But really for me, I think the critical thing is being a collaborator and learning and trying to explore as much as you can. So whether you're thinking about desirable, viable or feasible elements, where do you gravitate and who can support you? Um, so when it comes to visionary and implementer, these are just some of the things that come up. This is not like Myers-Briggs. This isn't about, you know, what you're, you know, this is just kind of thinking about where you gravitate and again, of course, this comes down to context and, and the context and the situation at hand. For those of you that know me, you can probably throw me into visionary, which is probably fair enough. Um, but then again, what would be my, my compliment, uh, complimenter? So this is something I sort of plotted. And again, working with other people, collaborating and thinking about how to define these types of things and those questions that we need to be answering. So when it comes to strategic visionary, um, that big picture thinker, what is the art of the possible, right? That real opportunity to really do that blue sky thinking and understand what the motivation is for modifying a product or creating a new product. The why factor, why are we doing what we're doing? And be it visualization or be it other means, how can we really explore that? Do a lot of, lot of have lots of lovely chats with Gabrielle around, um, you know, experimental, having that experimental mindset that we've been talking about. What is that minimum viable experiment? You can still be very strategic, but still want to get something tested quickly. I'm not so keen on the MVP um, interpretation, but I like what Jeff Patton says and, and others around MVE and that mindset just there, get it out the door and learn fast. We can of course still be visionary and more sort of tactical, as mentioned, customer journey mapping or looking at things on a much more of a, a tactical perspective, but validating, you know, what we're trying to do as we sort of continuously adapt our roadmaps and our approaches as we go. And being that data driver, are we delivering the right outcomes? So when we're actually in that space of execution, we also need to consider and I hate the word scope creep. It's really, you know, uh, understanding is, is growing, not, not, not scope creep. But if we're in this execution space, maybe we're not going to be thinking about sort of uh, any, any, any new elaborating on ideas at that stage. We'll be thinking about what do we need to tell to validate that we're doing the right thing for this re release, whatever it may be. So you've guessed it. Uh, one more round, if you don't mind. And by the way, if I can in inspire you by saying there might be more beer later on, so you can do this. Um, consider a specific scenario because these are, this is, as Mike Cohen once said, said many things, but it might have been wrong. This may change. I, you might even be guinea pigs. 
believe it or not. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's framing discussion. So please have some discussions. Think of a scenario. What is your unique product stance? What makes you you? Be proud of that. But also, what is your blind spot? Think of scenarios. Feel free to use the framework, but more importantly, have some discussions. And I'll catch you in a minute. I hate stopping people from talking. Um, go on, don't give me a tumbleweed moment. Someone, someone say something. So, a debrief. Did anyone find it interesting? Was anyone very open and transparent about their blind spots? Or very proud about their uh, awesome product flavour? Yes. Yo, oh, yes! <laughs> Woo! Go for it. Oh, you want it as a date? Yeah! <laughs> I want some love back. To my right is one of the eight percent of the population who is actually a strategist. Oh wow! Okay. Um, so it's really rare for people to be able to see the future and then plan a route to the future, a really good route to the future. It comes naturally to about eight percent of the population. That's amazing. So strategist. Sorry to put you on the spot, but you, do you find the the implementation? Is it just? Is it I'm the, not a strategist. You said my lady to the left or right yeah, there. So this lady here. This lady. Sorry. This lady You're, here. Oh, my she left. You're my pay rise now. Probably job offers. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not a strategist at all. I, I'm autistic with ADHD, so I live in the future. I mean to get shit done, and I get upset if bullet points aren't lined up properly on slides. <laughs> it's a very stressful place. Embrace. That's awesome. And well, on that context, you know, do you therefore have a complementer? Do you find that in your world? Yes, I have another autistic with ADHD person who gets it, and we have a support worker who does all the things we can't manage to do very well. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, see, for me, diversity is just totally key. So I absolutely love that. Uh, we need to do some more talking later on. Um, so thank you. So uh, managed to kind of interview a, a few different people and kind of heat mapped what they're using, what tools they're using, what stories they're trying to generate. Uh, and again, why are we doing the stories? Remember those two key things. We're trying to infuse, to teach, to inspire. We're also thinking about making things memorable, right? But there's no point, it's like metrics, right? It's like outcome metrics. The metrics need to be actionable, right? Stories, there's no point creating these tools, having these tools, if they don't tell a story, they don't enable change and positive change. So what are these things that we need? So this was from a product coach uh, and some of the tools that they're using. Um, and this was from a, a product manager um, and some of the key tools. And again, that product roadmap seems to be a key thing, a key story generator in that world. Opportunity, solution trees, experimentation. Again, try not to be too um, try not to be too prescriptive because, of course, experimentation and ideas happen everywhere. Um, Gabrielle uh, talking about outcome delivery. Just uh, if you're familiar with um, the uh, Mobius Navigator, um, and uh, there are some new books available, um, you'll be familiar with the, some of these different story generators. So. Uh, this is actually probably the most enjoyable element, really, of this whole discovery piece is actually interviewing people. And my, uh, my, my helper here, who I've only met yesterday, used to do UX, so I'll be interviewing you over a beer later on. Um, I don't know if you knew that. Um, so that's that. We can just have a beer. Uh, so that's, that is it. So that is uh, one and a half minutes for uh, any questions. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.